up? I'm the math teacher Goat, and today in fourth grade math land, we are going to talk about the fun world of long division. That's right, we've made it. We've made it to long division. It's tricky, but it's also very important. If you don't have scrap paper and pencil, go get some. If you haven't liked and subscribed my videos, do that now. And we're just going to get right into it. We are doing dividing two digit numbers by one digit numbers. So it's going to look a little something like this. Now we have what's called our dividends. We have our divisors. We have a vinculum. Okay, that's that little bar thing. It's called a vinculum. Bet you didn't know that. Your answer is going to be a quotient. But let's not worry about the words. Let's worry about the process. Every single one of these problems, we are going to follow the same process. We're going to be like, how many times does this go into that? Write a number, multiply, subtract, repeat. Okay, so we are going to follow a step-by-step -step process for these problems. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we are doing 90 divided by 6. Okay, 90 divided by 6. We are going to ask ourselves, how many 6s fit in nine. We're only going to focus on one digit at a time if we can. If we can. If we can't, then we do more digits, but we only focus on one digit at a time. So one more time, we ask ourselves, how many sixes fit in nine? Well, one six fits in nine. One six goes into nine. Now, I know six times one is six, but I can only fit one six into nine. If I were to say two, that would say 12. That's too much. Okay, so six goes into nine one time. We write the one up here. Take that one and multiply it to six, one times six, and write it underneath the nine. Okay, now we subtract the numbers. Nine minus six is three, and drop down the next digit over. From here, we repeat the process. Okay, so we ask ourselves, how many times does 6 go into 3? Well, it doesn't. So, how many times does 6 go into 30? Well, it goes into 30 a perfect 5 times. So, we write a 5 up here. We multiply 5 to 6. That gives us 30, just like we did before. We subtract the numbers. That gives us 0, which means our answer is just going to be 15. When the answer is 0, when our final part is zero, which is going to be the remainder, we'll get there. We just say our answer is 15. So 90 divided by 6 is 15. Okay? Tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Now let's do it again. However, it's not written out the way we wanted to. Okay? The larger number goes inside the house and the smaller number lives outside. Okay? And then we repeat the process. How many times does 4 go into 6? Six? 4 goes into 6 one time. So we write out a 1 right there. Now we multiply 1 to 4, which is 4, and write that directly underneath 6. Subtract those numbers. 6 minus 4 is 2. Drop down the 4, and now you have 24, and repeat the process. How many times does 4 go into 2? It doesn't, so let's do both digits. How many times does 4 go into 24? 6 times exactly. So 6 times 4 is 24. Subtract the numbers. You're going to get 0. And since you get 0, we circle 16 because we're done. 64 divided, I'm sorry, yes, yeah, 64 divided by 4 is 16. Okay, let's do it again. 57 divided by 3. How many 3's fit into 5? How many times does 3 go into 5? Just once. So you write the 1 above the 5. 1 times 3 is 3. Now subtract those guys. 5 minus 3 is 2. Drop down the next digit repeat the process. How many times does 3 go into 2? It doesn't. But we can add that next digit. How many times does 3 go into 27? 9 times. So you write the 9 right above here. Multiply 9 to 3, you get 27. Subtract, you get 0, 
which means our answer is 19 exactly. Okay? Very, very, very involved. Very, very, very busy. It's just you're following a lot of steps. But I want you to try it on your own. Remember, in order to do these, you have to write them out like this. So I'll write this first one out for you. But you're going to follow the same exact steps, see what you can come up with, and then pause the screen. Of course, right now, this is where you take your scrap paper, you pause the screen, see what you get, come back, let's check our work. All right. Three goes into seven two times. Okay, three times six. Three times two is six. Multiply two to three, and you get six. Subtract those. Seven minus six is one. Drop down the eight. Repeat the process. How many? <laughs> We're doing dark, scary math now. My lights just turned out. But I'm going to keep it this way. It's spooky math time. Spooky math time. All right. Anyway, repeat the process. How many times does three go into one? It doesn't. How many times does three go into 18? Six times. So you take that six, multiply it to three. Six times three is 18. Subtract those numbers and you get zero, which means my answer is 26. So uh, 78 divided by three is 26. Hmm. Yeah. I thought I heard something. <laughs> Spooky. Spooky math. Spooky math time. Let's do this next one. 60 divided by 4. We'll write it out like this. Here's my 60. Here's my 4. How many times does 4 go into 6? One time. Multiply 1 to 4 and you get 4. Subtract 6 minus 4. That gets you 2. Drop down the zero, and you get 20, and repeat your process. Four goes into two, no times. But move, if you move over, four goes into 20, five times. So five times four is 20. Subtract that, you get zero. Remainder zero means 15 is your answer. And you get 15. so scared of all these spooky problems. Spooky stuff. I'm nervous. Hmm. Now let's talk about the fun world of remainders. Okay, we haven't run into a remainder yet. Now let's just make believe that we don't know what that means and we'll talk about what it means. We'll get there. Okay, let's repeat this process. Two goes into eight four times. So you multiply four to two, that gets you eight. Subtract the numbers, that gets you zero. Bring down the five. Two goes into zero no times. Two goes into five two times. So multiply two to two, that gets you four. Subtract four, that gets you one. And bring to, uh-oh, we're out of numbers. Wait a minute. In the last five problems that we did, that number was zero. Now the number is not zero. There's a leftover number. That number is your remainder. So what we will do is what we will do is we will say 42 R1. That R1 means remainder one. So if I were to, for example, turn this into a word problem and say I have uh, 85 cookies. I'm going to divide that amongst two friends. Everybody gets 42 cookies, but then there's one left over. There's one remainder cookie, uh, which will belong to me. Because don't I deserve it? I do deserve it. I deserve my cookie. I'm teaching in the dark, for goodness sakes. Of course I deserve it. Okay, let's do a bunch. We're going to follow the same process. Maybe we get a remainder. Maybe we don't. I guess time will tell. All right, first off, this isn't even written out the way I want it to. So let's do 3 and 92, okay? And we start the process. 3 goes into 9 three times. 
3 times 3 is 9. Subtract. 9 minus 9 is 0. Drop down the 2. 3 goes into 0, no times. 3 goes into 2, no times. So if we end up just trying our number and 3 can't go in that number, it's going to be 0. So we do 0 times 3 is 0. Subtract. 2 minus 0 is 2. We are out of numbers, which means we have remainder 2. So this becomes 30 remainder 2. That one was weird, wasn't it? That was very weird. 7 goes into 5, no times, OK? 7 goes into 53, 7 times. 7 times 7 is 49. Subtract 53. Well, first off, 3 minus 9 is uh, you got to carry the 1, and you can carry the 1, 4. So 53 minus 49 is 4. So I'm out of numbers. My answer is 7 remainder 4. Now let's try this last one. 37 divided by 4. So let's write it out the way we need to. 4 goes into 3, 0 times. 4 goes into 37, 9 times, because 9 times 4 is 36. OK, subtract. 7 minus 6 is 1. 3 minus 3 is nothing. We get 1. There's no more numbers left over. So we get 9 remainder 1, which means my answer is 9 remainder 1. OK? You try it. No, I'm doing more. Oh boy, lucky me. Looks like I'm doing more, and then you'll try a bunch later on. Uh, okay, <clears throat> no big deal. Let's write it out the right way. 5 divided by 67. 5 goes into 6 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. Subtract them. 6 minus 5 is 1. Drop down the 7. 5 goes into once, no times. 5 goes into 17, 3 times. 3 times 5 is 15. Subtract them. 17 minus 5 is 2. No more numbers. 13 remainder 2. 13 remainder 2 is my answer. OK? Let's do another one. 4 goes into 5 one time. 1 times 4 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. Drop down the 8. Repeat. 4 goes into 1, no times. 4 goes into 18, 4 times. 4 times 4 is 16. Draw out the minus sign. 18 minus 16 is 2. I'm out of numbers. So my answer is 14 remainder 2. 9 goes into 4, no times. 9 goes into 46, 5 times. 5 times 9 is 45. Subtract. 46 minus 45 is 1. No more numbers left over. 5 remainder 1 is going to be my answer. OK? Now you try it. So set this up the way it's supposed to look. Do a bunch of problems, two of them in this case. So pause the screen first, do them, come back, check your work. All right, welcome back. 4, 83. 4 goes into 8 two times. 2 times 4 is 8. Subtract. 8 minus 8 is 0. Drop down the 3. 4 goes into 0, 0 times. So 4 goes into 3, 0 times. So you write out your 0, multiply 0 to 4, which is 0, and then subtract. 3 minus 0 is 3. I'm out of numbers, which means I'm going to get 20 remainder 3. My answer is 20 remainder 3. OK, let's do it again. 7 goes into 9 
once. One times seven is seven. Nine minus seven is two. Drop down the one. Seven goes into two, no times. Seven goes into <coughs> 21, three times. Multiply three to seven, that gets you 21. Subtract, and you get zero. So this one didn't have a remainder. So my answer is just a nice, big, flat-out, lucky 13. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get remainders, and sometimes you don't. It's a commercial. You try it again. You pause the screen, try these three. Maybe you'll get a remainder for all three of them. Maybe you won't for all three of them. Maybe you'll get a little mix. We'll see. Pause the screen, give it a shot, come on back. Welcome back. Let's write this out the way it's supposed to be. Okay? Like that. Four goes into three, no times. Four goes into 33, eight times. Eight times four is 32. Now you subtract. Three minus two is one. Nothing there. Four goes, in, well, I, I'm done. There's no more numbers. So since there's no more numbers, my answer is gonna be eight, remainder one. So eight, remainder one. I'm pretty sure we did that exact same problem already, but you know what, we're gonna do it again. Seven goes into nine one time. One times seven is seven. Nine minus seven is two. Drop down the one. Yeah, we did this problem. Seven goes into two. Mm -mm. Seven goes into <coughs> two anyone. Three times. Three times seven is <gasps> two anyone. And 21 minus 21 is zero, which means no remainder, which means 13 is your answer, just like we did in the last problem that was hanging up there. Eight goes into two, no times. Eight goes into 23, two times. Two times eight is 16. Subtract. Uh, carry the one, carry the one, make the other one. 13 minus six is seven. One minus one is zero. I'm out of numbers, so I'm gonna have a remainder of seven. The answer is two remainder seven. Well, we did it, boys and girls. We did spooky math today. Spooky, spooky math. Thank you for watching. The next video is going to be three and four digit numbers instead of just the two digits, so it's gonna be more challenging. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoy more spooky math, tell all of your friends, and I'll make more spooky math videos where the lights accidentally go off in the middle of the video and I decide to do nothing about it. I love you, thanks for watching, bye.